Hi, I'm Naomi Scott and I play the role of Sky Riley in Smile 2. Lucas was so brilliant. Again, just, you know when someone just understands the assignment and he just, the way he showed up, again, it's so, anyone who has, any actor or performer who has done prosthetics, especially with a lot of blood, it's so rough, man. He was just fantastic. It was really hard for him to, again, ratchet up to that, uh, at 10, right, level of intensity and choking, like that stuff's never fun. Um, and I think he killed it, man. I think his smile. Yeah. Rosemary um, is obviously such an incredible actress. And as soon as I met her, I was like, oh, we're gonna have fun. Again, it's just, an, she is such an instinctual, present actor. And I just knew we were going to get to play together. And I was like, this is great. Dylan is so perfectly cast because I just felt like she had the right energy for Gemma. Um, and I kind of feel like what you see is a lot of Dylan bringing herself to the character. And she just has a great sense of humor. One of the things I really love about Parker is, is the fact that he, he does understand the, he leans into the ridiculous and really embraces that and the unhingedness and the humor. And I really, I think it works really well. There were three songs that were written, um, one written and produced by a duo called Take A Day Trip and two songs that were written and produced by Ida Rose, um, Alexis Kesselman. And she really was the, key to unlocking Sky's sound. Two days after I was cast, I was in a studio and I'm Zooming with Alexis and we're, I'm cutting vocals for this song. And so I think she is such a huge component of creating Sky and the sound of Sky, um, which was then developed together because we got the opportunity to write together. The end credit song, Death of Me, um, which really, everyone really loved the title, Death of Me. And so we wrote a song around that concept and that was so fun because we, we were in person and we just had them, we really had fun with it. This kind of, I will do anything, um, this very extreme uh, version of whether it's infatuation or whatever, but it's not necessarily the healthiest, but it's just messy and it's also kind of fun um, to play into that character. And Parker's just great, man, because he just trusts us. He really trusts um, me and, and all the other um, producers, writers involved. And uh, I, yeah, I had fun with it. I would describe Sky Sound as um, maudlin, electronic, self-aware, bit tongue-in-cheek, just pop, 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 pop. Um, and it was so fun. My initial thoughts were, you know, how are we going to, how are we going to jump off off the first one? You know, wh where does the story go after there? And then reading the second one, it still lives in the world and the tone, but it's so different and it's bigger. It's the scale of it is scarier. It's just a heightened version of the story in a different character and the stakes are higher and it's fun and making it around a pop star is so cool. This one does such a good job of exploring fame and exploring, you know, where the intersection between public and, and personal life meet and, and the true, you know, traumatic uh, response to that and how, how fame can really screw somebody up. Naomi, A, she can sing incredibly, she can dance incredibly, uh, but she's also, the thing that I think is most interesting about Naomi playing Sky Riley is when you meet her, she is completely the opposite of this character and not who I would imagine. But then I see her, and this is a testament to what an amazing actress she is, it's like she goes on set and it's a completely different person and, and then I can't imagine anyone else playing Sky Riley. I think this movie has such a good job of not ever playing something to be funny for the sake of being funny. It, it, it comes naturally and inherently from the truth and the awkwardness and the nervousness and the, the 
I think balancing that with the suspense and the horror of it is just what makes it such a fun watch. I mean, that's what I remembered from the first movie is the audience is laughing one minute and then genuinely screaming from a jump scare the next minute. I think what I like about working with Parker is he knows this genre, he knows this movie, this world so well that I trust him. I trust everything he has to say. And, and when I'm lost, he has the answer. And he's really good at doing that smile face. He is so good at doing the smile face that he needs to have a part in this movie where he does it because it's absolutely horrifying. I think that this second movie can be everything that you expect from the first one, that you loved from the first one, but the stakes are higher, we up the ante, it's fun, there's music, there's dancing, it's kind of everything you want in one movie. What I liked about the first smile as well is that it's not just a jump at you horror movie. Like you are scared, but you are also situationally scared. You are scared because you're invested in the character. And ultimately, the first smile provided such a meaningful emotional punch. Like there's a real lesson in those things. And I think talking with Parker, what he keeps saying is like he wants to be able to put these things into the studio system, like to actually have a message in something that will be made. Like it's scary and then it's kind of funny and then, you know, you, you sort of, he plays with your emotions of like, well, what, what do I really want to happen? Uh, and I think he uses that, like your experience watching the movie, like you as a viewer are kind of a character. It's, it's interesting, so um, totally different, totally fun. She's incredible. I can watch her work for forever, and I, and I do. I mean, a lot of the times I have downtime and I'm just watching her go, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, you're wild. Um, and she's also such a great leader. You know, there's, I think being number one in the call sheet, like being the lead actress is so important because you're the captain of the ship, you know, and the way that you are reflects downward. and. She's such a great leader. She is so open and loving and warm. And if you're lucky, you feel like, you know, if you're lucky, you like the people that you work with. And if you're really lucky, you, you made a friend. And I think that uh, I, I, we, we definitely became friends over this process, for sure. Uh, my name is Kyle Gowner. I play Joel. Parker's an interesting guy. He's, he's, he's really smart. He's a good writer. He's a really talented filmmaker. And he also gives very good notes to his actors. Um, I really enjoy working with, with Parker. It's nice getting to work with him again. It's, it's really rare that you work with people more than once. So to be able to work with somebody a second time and to be able to work with somebody a second time on a sequel because the first movie did so well, that's really, um, I mean, A, rare, and B, it's... It's cool. It's a, it's it's a good feeling to be like, yeah, we made something really cool that people enjoyed, and now we're we're back to do it again. The tone of both of these movies is 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 really is really heavy. They're really dark, but the first one is is really kind of private, almost really intimate in a way, where Rose is dealing directly with all of these people in her life. It's it's a much smaller universe, and you're watching her start to lose it privately whereas in this one which i think is really a cool way to do it you're dealing with somebody who's so public who's so front and center and in the public eye and you're watching them deal with the curse in front of everybody so it really um flips everything on its head it's still just as dark but it just completely flips the script i think there's nothing scarier than your own mind you know there's nothing scarier than the possibility of not being able to escape your own mind or be able to trust what you're seeing um trust that it's real a slasher or something like that you can run away from you know you can you can possibly get away but you can't escape yourself and i think that's really 
it's a really kind of frightening place to be. There's something primal about a smile. There's something about showing your teeth. There's something about having that in your face and not necessarily knowing what's hidden behind that. I think what's exciting about the sort of the construct of the movie is that it's like, it's a very familiar horror because there's no boogeyman. It's just kind of the way that the mind works. Uh, like there's nothing scarier than your own trauma and your own fear response going haywire. Like I, I, I have like, I get like panic attacks and stuff and there's like, there's nothing scary. That's a lot scarier than like a guy being in your house um, and there's just no escape from yourself. Um, so that's true, true, true deep horror. And uh, it's, it's a very smart, scary idea. I play Gemma, she's Sky's friend from childhood. And like, when you're super famous, your friends work for you too, as a friend, you know what I mean? So like, she's kind of in her entourage and of the people orbiting her um, and they've had a falling out and she's no longer in her orbit and then has sort of come back now that she's not doing so good. I had some conversations with Parker about the nature of Gemma and Sky's relationship um, and how it's fractured now and how deep it goes. And the idea that like, uh, you know, how, how necessary a person who's known you pre-fame is when you're as famous as a person like Sky. Naomi's a really good actor. It's very scary. Like. I'm very impressed by her ability to have tears come out of her eyes for 12 hours. Um, I can't do that. I don't know if I um, have some sort of genetic condition that prevents that, or I'm just not as good of an actor as Naomi, probably both. Um, but like, it's amazing to see her. She, this, this role demands so much of her. Like She has to sing and dance and cry and scream. Um, it, which is so taxing for three months. I can't even imagine. I'm tired talking about it. I think Parker is a very talented filmmaker um, who has hit on something so scary. It's so scary to smile at someone. Um, and I can't believe, I was telling him, like, I can't believe no one's ever, like, done that before. Like, it is, like, like animals do that to intimidate each other. Um, and he's hit on something very scary and then very successfully executed that, um, which is why every single person saw and liked his movie so much. I feel like this movie builds on its predecessor in the sense that it's just like a bigger the stakes are just bigger it's really just like smile on crack what's so enjoyable about horror movies is sort of the tension between like appearing normal to other people and going through the psychosis of being haunted and I feel like he's chosen such a brilliant protagonist for that where there's already so much you have to hold together publicly when you're a celebrity um, that now also people are smiling at you. Um, very scary. I came on board because Parker and I had a meeting and I could tell from the meeting that he had a real vision uh, and that he knew what he wanted which I think is always a huge plus and the script was great. Like. For, especially for a genre movie, it, there was real dynamics to play, and there was a real character there. Parker sort of pitched, well, he told me that the first smile was about, was a meditation on mental health, and this one was a meditation on fame, which also seems to be a meditation on mental health and the tolls that it can take, especially on a young person. Um, I remember an actor I admire really a lot, Sam Rockwell, was like, nobody should be famous until they're 30, and you really see this character of Sky Riley just completely deteriorate under the weight, or she had already, and then um, it's hard to tell if it's this entity that, it, you know, that are the smilers, or if it's the insanity of um, having that much attention and projection on you at a young age. It's been really fun to work with Naomi for a lot of reasons. One, because she's just a phenomenal talent and because she loves growing and learning. So it, she's just game for the difficulty that this part requires and the scenes and the technicality that comes with it. She's got a really good um, sort of producer hat too where she can take something that's good and make it that much better. Like she can look at it from over here, which is really exciting. 
and she's just an absolute like gem of a human. I think what's exciting, especially when you make a sequel, is if you can expand the world and the vision and the scope. And this one definitely feels like double, you know, like smile extra. Like the scope of the world and the numbers um, and the scares are that much more because, um, I mean, it's still primal in a way. There's something in a way that it reminds me of some of those 70s horror films that are scary without the big monster effects. They're just scary because the door moves or because, you know, you want to check in your closet and under the bed. Um, but then the world of fame and that things could also be in your phone and the, and the use of technology, I think, um, makes it scary, like, that it's all around you and it's... Uh, yeah, the scope is big.